A year after the publication of the original Numenera rulebook in 2013, MCG introduced Character Options, a 90-plus page supplement offering new descriptors, type abilities, foci, and more. Character Options, at the time, was a welcome selection of new abilities and character creation resources. It expanded the game in multiple ways, making characters more dynamic while introducing new pieces of lore that were less focused on exposition and more dedicated to adding flavor to characters directly in the game. As of the 2020s, however, much of the content in the first Character Options supplement either made its way into the modern Numenera Discovery and Destiny core rules, or in the revised Cypher System rulebook, making it, as a standalone supplement, less unique in comparison to MCG's more recent publications. In this video, I'm going to discuss what material from the original character options is still relevant to Numenera in the 2020s when using Discovery and Destiny, and whether or not this book is worth looking into presently if you're thinking of expanding your game. Most of the content in this book was either revised and republished in the newer books and the Cypher System rulebook, but there are some unique surprises and character options that make it an interesting addition to any current Numenera collection. If you're a collector or are only playing with Numenera books that were published before the introduction of Discovery and Destiny in 2018, then Character Options makes a lot of sense as it contains material that can't be found in the older books. In fact, Character Options sort of reveals the directions MCG was heading in when it came to expanding the Ninth World as a setting and the Cypher system as a set of RPG rules. If you've switched over or are starting with Discovery and Destiny, however, at least from a mechanical perspective, Destiny already contains a good vertical slice of the content from character options, with a number of descriptors and foci either reappearing or having been revised to match some of the subtle changes and revisions to the game over the years. If you still want to expand what is on offer in Discovery and Destiny, I will make the case that character options still has material on offer for your games. However, most, if not the majority, of the new descriptors, type abilities, and foci, as well as some optional rule adjustments, appear in a more revised and polished form in the current Cypher System rulebook, transforming this genre-fluid RPG book into the ultimate set of mod tools for Numenera, offering not only a wide selection of abilities, foci, descriptors, and more, but also alternative rules such as power shifts and different perspectives on ciphers that can radically augment a game of Numenera to suit the particular needs of a group without too much of a learning curve. What Character Options 1 offers, however, that is still exclusive is its collection of location-based descriptors unique to the Ninth World, as well as a set of new species descriptors for those who don't want to play human characters. And while most of the new type abilities in this book made their way into the revision of the Cypher System rulebook, there are still tens of unique abilities not available in Discovery and Destiny or the modern CSR. As a technical note, it's worth stating that character options status as a current set of rules is somewhat retired, meaning that it's a great fit for private home games where the exact nature of the rules can be very fluid. It may not be as great an addition for organized play programs or convention games, but whatever your situation, I find viewing character options as a somewhat experimental source of older and rarer rules is the best way to frame this book and its use cases. Despite coming in at under 100 pages, character options, particularly during the time it was published, was a welcome addition to what was on offer in the 2013 Legacy Core book, offering a sizable chunk of new descriptors, abilities, and foci. I personally view Character Options and its sequel, Character Options 2, as somewhat experimental in nature. The book was published prior to the rules and language revisions that would come to the game in Discovery and Destiny as well as the Cypher System rulebook. As a result, both Destiny and the Cypher System rulebook contain by and large better or simply different versions of most of the content that appears in Character Options. For example, Earthquake, a tier 6 ability for nanos, costs 10 intellect points and character options, but in the CSR it costs 7 might points. Fleet of Foot, as it appears in character options, requires a successful speed defense roll before use, whereas in Discovery it simply costs speed points to activate. Crowd Control, a tier 2 jack ability in character options, reappears in name in Numenera Discovery but now costs 6 points as a 4th tier ability and contains some different rules, languages, and functions. Character Options is filled with countless examples of this, and any cross-reference between the material in this book and the new Numenera core books or the Cypher System rulebook will reveal multiple reappearances, often with differing language or different rules parameters. There still remain a number of abilities, however, that appear to be exclusive to Character Options. 
This is particularly the case for combat abilities. Character Options 1 contains a number of attack-focused or combat-oriented abilities, especially for the Glaive, with unique options that don't readily appear in other books such as Guarded Attack, Shield Bash, Precise Strike, and Riposte. Character Options contains unique abilities and alternative rulings and wordings of existing choices in other books, and that certainly makes it worth looking at. What it has on offer for Foci, however, is a different story. Nearly all of the Foci that appear in Character Options went on to appear as revisions in either Discovery and Destiny and the Cipher System rulebook, where in those books they appear with additions in the form of ability choices at different tiers and more flavor options. Possesses a Shard of the Sun, for example, is a focus which appears in character options but was also revised for Numenera Destiny and not only features new ability options at tiers 3 and 6 in the newer book, but also adds more flavor and options such as rules for different colors of light. While there's definitely a conversation to be had over considering the utility or desirability of some of the older rules, like whether or not the ability Aggression in character options, a tier 1 nano ability, is or is not better with its rework as a tier 1 glaive ability in Discovery, the same cannot be said for the added foci. Foci, with the exception of the very few Ninth World specific ones and character options, either appear in Destiny or the Cypher System rulebook and are demonstrably better in their revised form. Character options, as of the publication of the new Numenera books and the Cypher System rulebook, is not terribly valuable for new foci. The same is arguably true of the descriptors, though I will specifically mention that the character options exclusive descriptor, Noble, contains an interesting rule framework that randomizes the ease or difficulty of certain social interactions and this could be expanded on or applied to other rules if you're curious and clever. Otherwise, this book doesn't have much to offer that isn't either in Numenera Destiny or the Cypher System rulebook for descriptors. Combining character options 1 with Discovery and Destiny as well as the Cypher System rulebook will likely involve a lot of rules duplications and you'll have to make decisions over which versions of certain abilities are better for your uses than the others. My personal approach is to always check Discovery and Destiny as well as the Cypher System rulebook to see if a character options based rule was revised and then I'll default to what's in the modern book leaving character options to highlight the collection of additions that are still unique to it. But where character options remains relevant is in its contribution to Numenera as a setting, where it fills in and provides for more opportunity to create characters that have a deeper connection to the Ninth World. Though I'm not a fan of location-based descriptors mechanically, meaning I prefer players keep the option of having a descriptor that adds more individual flavor and spirit to their character in the form of a standard adjective, the location-based descriptors in character options are perfect for designing player characters that have a greater connection to the setting of the Ninth World as written, while also offering inspiration for NPCs by suggesting various political and philosophical outlooks from the countries and governments of the Steadfast and beyond, as well as cultural cultural elements such as particular ways of dressing or communicating. Overall, the fact that these are presented as descriptors and thus rely on a lot of second-person perspective language makes the setting feel much more personal and direct to the reader, as opposed to the more standard textbook history lesson feel of what appears in other books. Character options really demonstrates the value of communicating lore in different ways and the results are really a breath of fresh air. Instead of being told about fictional countries, you're asked to imagine yourself as a character or a person living in this place, and I think that level of connection is just a bit stronger and more inspirational when it relies on this kind of language. It's also a great lesson for those who are looking for more descriptive sentence structures for their games. The immediacy of the second person perspective sentence structure in the context of an RPG appears to be very valuable as a linguistic function. With all nine countries of the Steadfast represented and four beyond based descriptors, the setting info is definitely valuable to just about any Numenera player or game master. Whether it comes in the form of reminding players of the role that the sea plays in the culture of the Sea Kingdom of Gaon, or how concepts like mercy and justice play out in Malvik culture, or how the unique city of Ephremon in the Ba'adenu forest may influence how your character moves about this world, this extra dose of more character-related setting info works nicely alongside the location descriptors on offer in the Ninth World Guidebook, and in general can help players enmesh their characters a bit more tightly and organically into the setting, even if they only apply apply the spirit of these descriptors to their characters and not necessarily the mechanical changes.
Numenera can basically be about anything. Its florid and kaleidoscopic setting allows for any manner of stories featuring just about any manner of characters. Standard dungeon-crawling explorations of abandoned ruins and ancient mysterious technologies fit right alongside roleplay-heavy character drama, political intrigue, and stunning if not cryptic revelations about the history and state of the world a billion years into the future. That said, the language of the books tends to skew toward a few visions of what the game could or should be, and this often centers on stories that are very human-centric. Numenera Destiny in particular seems to begin with this premise and adds to it a vision of humanity expanding across the Ninth World, building and maintaining settlements. From the beginning, Numenera offered alternatives to human characters in the form of visitants and mutants, with the core rules introducing Vargellans, Latimores, and mutant humans. The approach mechanically the game takes is to use a different species as the character's descriptor in their character sentence, which is what character options continued with four new species descriptors to choose from and a couple of pages of added options for mutant humans. I am personally not a fan of this mechanic, as I think swapping out a descriptor for a character's species name robs a character of a lot of personalization and it essentializes them somewhat problematically. My personal approach is similar to what is offered in Liminal Shore, where the character can be assumed to be of a particular non-human species while still having the liberty of choosing a regular descriptor that adds flavor and mechanics to their character. I tend to homebrew how this works mechanically on a case-by-case -case basis, but having some new choices for non-human characters makes character options definitely worth checking out. As I mentioned, for the location-based descriptors, the use of second-person perspective in the language for these species grants a valuable immediacy for an RPG, centering the reader as the character and showcasing the role to be played. More than anything else, I find the perspective and experience gained from reading through these descriptors is incredibly valuable for designing non-human PCs and NPCs. The mechanical aspects are almost secondary in this way. Since different species often have different mechanical or roleplay considerations, such as the Vargellan's ability to reforge and reassign their stat pool, on the fly, I often suggest that playing a new species can be more enjoyable once players are more familiar with the cipher system as a rule set and the ninth world as a setting. It is all too often the case that what ends up happening with species options is that players sort of treat them as they would race options in D&D, with the Vargellans sometimes being compared to elves and Latimores being compared to dwarves in the same way that glaives get seen as analogs to fighters and jacks are described as rogues. There are a number of complications and considerations with this approach, some which beg us to really analyze the way that we use the concept of race in RPGs, but in a best case scenario this has the effect of turning Numenera into a science fantasy skin D&D, which might be the desire of some groups, but it risks dragging along with it the very loaded concepts of using race or species as a class of character in a game. Using non-human species definitely warrants a conversation with your group, and utilities like Consent in Gaming or the TTRPG Safety Toolkit, links to which can be found in the description below, are very useful for outlying what's expected at each session. I don't think the centering of humanity in Numenera was an arbitrary decision. Those playing non-human characters in this way might wish to take this into consideration, and the descriptions of the species and character options really helps to make that a bit more possible. But regardless of how you choose to handle the nature and subject of race and species in your games, mechanically or narratively, the extra species descriptors and character options really help to diversify in some pretty extreme ways the kinds of player and non-player characters in Numenera, adding to the lore and narrative fabric of the game in weird, creative, and experimental and expressive ways. Whether you choose to use the species descriptors mechanically as written in character options or not, having these new identities in the game is more than welcome. Character Options contains the wonderful MCG tradition of offering suggestions, thoughts, and different takes on the rules as written. The final section of the book, Optional and Additional Rules, contains some thoughts on further customization of characters and rules. Some of these appear in the Cypher System rulebook, such as the thoughts on modifying abilities and skills that come from character backstories, but others are specific to this book. These final dozen or so pages are great for thinking about ways to tweak the Cypher System to your liking and might offer some great inspiration for making a game just a little bit more unique and specific to your story and characters.
On paper, character options is essentially made obsolete by the introduction of Numenera Discovery and Destiny as well as the Cypher System rulebook. When it comes to intense customization and options for characters and beyond, I would advise gamers focus on adding the Cypher System rulebook to their collection before considering legacy material such as character options. Too many of the choices in this book either appear in later installments and are made better with clearer language and rules revisions. That said, there is definitely a substantial cost difference between the two books, and if you only want to focus on Numenera products and aren't interested in diving into other Cypher system content for compatible inspirations, then character options likely makes a lot of sense, though much of the content in that book still does appear in Discovery and Destiny, and you'll have to potentially navigate some outdated rules and rely on page references to the old core rulebook, which may take a bit more time to find in Discovery. The location and species-based descriptors, however, as well as the unique abilities that do appear in this book make character options a unique addition to consider, and it is readily available in PDF on either MCG's own store or on places like Drive-Thru RPG. At the time of its publication, character options injected a ton of information and new options into a game of Numenera, and while it no longer holds that position, especially considering the other options out there, it remains a book that can add a good handful of unique elements to your game, and for that reason, it's worth keeping an eye on for a good opportunity to broaden your own ninth world just a bit. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you're interested in more Numenera and TTRPG content, please be sure to subscribe to The Infinite Construct here on YouTube, follow me over on Twitter at INFConstruct, and follow me on Twitch at The Infinite Construct.